All right, friends, well, we'll go ahead and get started for the day. Welcome to At Home with Moat. My name is Dana Henderson, but you guys can call me Miss Dana. And happy Earth Day. Oh, it's amazing that we get to share this day together. So, of course, every day is Earth Day, but again, so nice to be able to come together on Earth Day. And our topic today is perfect for Earth Day. We are talking turtles, at home with turtles today. And ancient and legends say that the weight of the world is held up by the shell of a turtle. So it's kind of exciting to be able to chat about turtles on Earth Day today. So what we're gonna do today, guys, is I'm gonna be introducing you to a few turtles that call moat home uh, that are also native to Florida. And we'll be going through kind of the differences between tortoises, turtles, and sea turtles. Then we'll learn a little bit about what moat is doing um, as far as turtle research. And then we have a fun little activity to do at the end. Um, so again, guys, um, please, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. If you have been watching our past um, live streams, welcome back. We really, really appreciate your support. Um, so typically we are doing these homeschool programs on site and I'm actually on site today, which I miss the um, moat so much. Um, so, so glad to be here to introduce you all to some of our turtles. Now, we do have our chat feature going, so if you all have questions or comments or anything like that, please feel free to use the chat. We've got Miss Elena and Miss Lauren moderating, so I may not see your question. If I do, I'll try my best to answer it, but they're amazing, and they'll be able to answer all of your questions. Of course, also after our program, uh, go check out our Flipgrid. I'm going to have a follow-up activity there, and you guys can post uh, your sea turtle nest that we're going to be making later. So without further ado, let's get started and talk turtles. I heard it's going to be turtly awesome. All right, get ready for some turtle puns. <laughs> All right, guys, well, I'm going to share my screen. I'm not going to do, um, it's a little bit more like last time where we're not doing a ton of um, slides, but I do want to show you some fun pictures and some videos. So let me just share this with you guys. So at home with turtles, and that image is that uh, legend of the turtle holding up the weight of the world. All right, so since we're talking important turtles today, I'm going to just kind of show you what, what makes a turtle a turtle, basically. Actually, let's go back before we get to, turtle, to tortoises. So what makes a turtle a turtle? What do you guys think? Put some stuff on the chat for me. Answer. Yeah, you guys got it, that shell. Now, does anyone know what type of an animal a turtle is? A reptile, you got it. Now, can anyone tell me what makes a reptile a reptile? I'm actually gonna stop sharing my screen for a second for you guys, because I wanna show you some fun stuff. What makes a reptile a reptile? Ah, uh, yes, oh, hi Hayden, cold-blooded, absolutely. So everybody kind of take your hand, put it on your forehead right now. How are you feeling? A little warm. I know I'm sweating right now, right? We're a little warm. That's because we are warm blooded, right? Uh, and what? Not that we have warm blood necessarily, but we are what's called endothermic. Endo means internal. Thermic means um, heat. So all of our heat is controlled um, uh, internally. Okay. So we sweat to stay cool. We shiver to stay warm. Well, reptiles are not like that, right? They are ectotherms, okay? So they have other ways to keep their body cool and to keep their body warm. All right, what else makes a turtle a turtle? Yeah, everybody feel along those bumps along your back, right? Everybody, everybody have their backbones with them today? Yeah, we can't get out of that. So turtles are vertebrates, right? Now turtles have a really cool special adaptation with their vertebrate that we'll talk about in a second, but they have bones, so they are vertebrates. Very good. What else makes a reptile a reptile? Yep. Yes, exactly. They are covered with scales. Okay. Now, we're, we're not talking snakes today, but snakes are a reptile, right? So all reptiles are covered with scales, okay? And they have to shed in order to grow, okay? Now, when we start talking turtles, I'll show you a little bit about how they actually shed. But this is from our resident indigo snake, Indy, okay? And snakes have a unique ability to shed 
all of their skin at once. Whereas turtles and alligators um, and lizards don't quite do the same. Let me see, where am I gonna set this guy? All right, what else makes a reptile a reptile? Yeah, no, um, no parental care typically, okay? So most of them lay eggs and the eggs are a little bit different than a chicken egg. They are usually a little bit squishy, okay? A little leathery, all right? Now not all reptiles lay eggs. Does anybody give me an example of a reptile that doesn't lay an egg? Yeah, some snakes. Some snakes give live birth. But for the most part, reptiles lay eggs and turtles are no different. Now, does anyone know the one reptile that is known to have parental care? A little bit of parental care. Most of them don't. Most of our turtles don't. As far as I know, none of our turtles. Alligator, great job. Kate, good job. Yeah. Oh, Bryson Coco, good job, Gator. Yeah, so the alligator, the moms give a little bit of parental care, okay? They don't feed them or anything, but they'll protect them um, once they hatch. Very good. Oh, so what, let's see, we've got, they're in ectothermic, so they're cold-blooded. They have a backbone, they're covered in scales, no parental care, lay eggs. There's one more that I'm really looking for. Yes, they have lungs. Great job, Richard. Everyone take a nice big deep breath for me. Oh, that's nice. I always like to do that in our programs. Let's do it one more time. Oh, it's Earth Day. Let's breathe in all that oxygen. Absolutely, right? And turtles are the same. Reptiles are the same, right? So they are breathing air with lungs. But think about that. A lot of them live in the water, especially sea turtles, right? So the fact that they are cold-blooded or ectotherm means they can slow their metabolism down. They can actually hold their breath much longer than us. Awesome. So we know what type of animal a turtle is. It's a reptile, okay? So now reptilia is the class that they're in. So it's class reptilia. Does anyone know what class we are in? Mammals, good job. We are in class mammalia, okay? So we have a little bit, a few different characteristics in our turtles, right? So turtles, class reptilia, and they are in um, a special order, and I can never say the order. I have it in the pre-activity lesson guide. It's, um, I'm not even gonna try to say it. It starts with a T. <laughs> yes, Adrian, thank you. <laughs> Testudine, is that how you say it? Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, so anyway, it's the order of turtles. It's the big group of turtles. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So now I'm gonna share that screen with you. I'm gonna put my turtle friend to the side because I have some more fun stuff to show you. Okay. So typically, Turtles are, are broken into three major groups most of the time, okay? Now, turtles is a common name, okay? And depending on where you live in the world, sometimes the common names are used interchangeably. Um, sometimes um, they might be the same, even though they're the different species. Um, so it all kind of depends on um, where you live. So the common names that I'm going to be teaching you now um, are just, you know, uh, common in North America, basically, um, and kind of all agreed on. So turtles is kind of the big, the big overall arching group. And then the first one we're going to talk about are our tortoises. Now this little guy was in my front yard, uh, and this is the gopher tortoise. Now, does anyone know what characteristics classify a tortoise as a tortoise? Yeah, these guys are terrestrial, they're land-based, and typically they are, are herbivores, okay? So this little gopher tortoise lived in my um, front yard for many years. He has since um, moved on. I hope he just moved on to bigger and better things, but uh, they're really, really amazing animals because they're what's known as a keystone species. Now, I know some of you guys know what that means. What does that mean to be a keystone species? Yeah, basically it means that they are the key to the whole ecosystem, okay? So if they were to be removed from the ecosystem, the whole ecosystem could collapse. So the gopher tortoise is really important for our terrestrial ecosystem here in Florida because their burrows, they actually make these burrows in their holes, they're home to a, 
upwards of like 250 different animals, which is so neat. Um, that snake shed that I showed you, wow, that's really hard to say. Say that three times fast. Snake shed showed you? No, don't do it. It's too hard. <laughs> it's from um, an indigo snake, and they are one of the um, animals that benefits from the burrows of the gopher tortoise. So they'll live in there. Um, they'll happily coexist in there, and indigo snakes are endangered. So really, really important uh, that we protect, and gopher tortoises are as well. It's really important that we protect them. Now this next one is just a video that I took of my of my little gopher tortoise eating in my front yard. So gopher tortoise is a great example of why it's so important to not use pesticides and fertilizers in your yard. These guys are perfectly happy munching on native vegetation. Um, and unfortunately, if something has been sprayed or added to the lawn, then they are also going to eat that. And it's well, not going to be very good for him. Oh, there he goes. So I hope my gopher tortoise friend is happy and healthy. Now, the next turtle I want to show you guys is um, one of our residents. Okay, so we've got our tortoises. Now, a lot of people around here as pets have those African spur tortoises. A lot of people have tortoises as pets. I'm kind of more of an advocate of let all of our turtles be out in the wild. Um, but every now and then there may be a situation where a turtle needs a home. And that is the case with some of these guys that I'm going to show you now. Um, so this guy that I'm going to show you is not considered a true tortoise. And that is because he prefers sometimes a little bit of more of a humid environment. Okay, a lot of our, our gopher tortoises like to be um, in more of a dry climate, okay. Uh, this guy is likes it to be a little bit wetter and also um, is considered an omnivore, okay. So loves to eat uh, bugs, worms, all that kind of stuff, in addition to vegetation. Any guesses who I'm going to bring out? Yes, if you read the pre-lesson guide, you already know. So first guy I'm gonna bring out is a, oh, Sam, you got it. I'm gonna bring out, oh, he's hiding under his box, so pardon me, guys, while I get him out of his dressing room. Oh, he's hissing, okay. So guys, this is Sam. And Sam is a full-grown male eastern box turtle, okay? Now, again, box turtles aren't necessarily considered true tortoises because even though they live on land, they do like to soak in a little bit of water. They like a little bit more humid climate, and they are omnivores, okay? He can swim in the air. Yes, he can, Hayden. <laughs> so a couple of great things that I want you guys to notice about turtles so um, is their shell. Okay, so really the shell is what makes a turtle a turtle. That is why they're in that order. Um, again, I'm not going to try to say it because I mess it up every time. Um, but that's why they're in that order is mainly because of that shell. Okay, now in a second, I'm going to show you a couple shells. Again, show you a couple shells, hard to say. Uh, and I'll let you guys kind of notice the differences. Okay, so this is Sam. So when you see his shell, what do you kind of notice about it? Notice anything cool about his shell? And it's a beautiful pattern. So it's kind of big. <laughs> Don't let him see the other shell. So it's kind of big and bulbous, okay? So tortoises typically are gonna have a big round shell, okay? Um, that's because they, well, for one, turtles don't fly, so they don't need to be aerodynamic. And these guys don't really have, they, they don't swim. They can't swim, okay? So you don't ever want to put a box turtle into a lake or a river because they won't be able to swim, okay? Um, so if you look at this, they have this big round shell. How many of you guys have ever seen a box turtle? How many of you have ever been chased down and attacked by a box turtle? Probably none of you, right? <laughs> and that is because they're not very fast, they're pretty slow. So his best defense, when he is scared or threatened, he's gonna go into his shell and hide, okay? Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> um, so the box turtle has something unique to all other turtles. They have what's called a hinged plastron, okay? Now this top shell, anyone know what the top shell is called? The carapace, the carapace. And the bottom shell is called the plastron. 
the plastron. So these guys actually have what's called a hinged plastron, okay? So if you look right here, he has this line. So when a box turtle is threatened, he can pull his head, his feet, his tail, everything into a shell, totally seal it up, and virtually become predator proof, okay? Um, and, oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> and then he kind of just looks like a rock, okay? So pretty good defense. Now, another thing I want you guys to look at with Sam are his feet, okay? So those feet are um, another way that you can look at a turtle and tell a lot about them. So you can typically tell where they live based on looking at those feet. So if you look at Sam's feet, you can tell there's no, um, there's no webbing in between there, okay? So that lets us know that he is a land turtle, okay? Now, box turtles in particular have a really small homing range, okay? So one of their biggest threats is people finding them and taking them as pets. It's a big no-no. You don't ever wanna do that. You don't ever take something from the wild unless it's in immediate danger. Then, of course, you could call a local wildlife shelter. But you don't ever want to do that because, uh, or you don't ever want to take it out of the wild unless it's in danger, okay? Ooh, Bella, great observation. He has these beautiful blue, I uh, almost said blue, <laughs> these beautiful red eyes. Now, that is a characteristic of the male box turtle, okay? So the males have these red eyes, and the females typically have um, this sort of beautiful brownish kind of golden eyes. Now, the reason we have Sam is because he came to us um, actually from the New England Aquarium. He had been at the Point Defiant Zoo, so he's been on a little bit of a travel, but he's originally from California. So these eastern box turtles, even though they're called eastern box turtles, they're actually found all over the country. Um, and we also have a Florida box turtle here as well. But he was found in a home, unfortunately, that had taken him illegally and kept him um, and a bunch of other, sorry, buddy, I keep scaring you talk with my hands too much when I'm holding a turtle, I think. Um, and so unfortunately, they had a bunch of turtles and we're not exactly sure what happened, um, why they had them. They were selling them for some reason, big no-no. And when he was in captivity, he lost his back leg. So little Sam is actually a tripod, but doesn't seem to slow him down at all. So he has his forever home here with us now. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and put Sam up, but the one last thing I want you to notice is his mouth. You guys notice that, that, that beak. What do you think? Do you think turtles, everyone say bye to Sam. Good job, Sam. Anyone think turtles have teeth? No, you guys are right. So that's another thing. Well, I'm gonna be sanitizing my hands in between each turtle. It's just rubbing alcohol. We want to make sure that we're not passing any germs or anything. We want to keep our turtles safe from us. We want to keep them safe from each other. And we want to keep our safe, ourselves safe from the turtles. Okay. But yeah, another thing that makes a turtle a turtle is the fact that they do not have teeth. Okay. So if you guys check out this, and we'll talk sea turtles a little bit more later, but this is a skull of a loggerhead sea turtle, and you can see that they don't have any teeth in that skull, okay? Now, depending on what they eat, it's going to depend on the shape of the beak and how strong the beak is, um, but no teeth there, okay? Now, guys, back to the question on our shells. How many of you think that a shell, that a turtle can come out of its shell? Anyone think a turtle can come out of its shell? Mason, you're exactly right. No, of course not, right? They are born with their shell. And if you guys check this out, again, I'm gonna show you this a little bit later because this is from a sea turtle, but their backbone is actually located right underneath their shell, okay? And um, which is pretty incredible. So I've seen some cartoons, you know, where the, the turtle comes out of the shell and the shell's like spinning around. They can't do that. So they're born with their shell and the shell grows as they grow. But check this out, their backbone is right there. Now, some of you guys that have been in my class before probably know the answer to this, but anyone know what these lines are? Oh, good job. Yes, you guys got it. Their ribs. So that is where their ribs are, okay? So you can see 
all of their internal organs are located just right under the shell, okay? And so their backbone is here and they're full of nerve endings, okay? So a lot of our turtles here at Moat like to be, like their back scratched. They love to get the algae off their shell. Um, and so they can feel all that. That's also what makes sea turtles so susceptible to boat strikes. Again, all of that um, internal organs are located right up under the shell. All right, great job, guys. So we've learned about our tortoises. We've learned about our, um, we have learned about our box turtles. Anyone know what the next type of turtle we're gonna talk about? I'm gonna share my screen with you. Yeah, we're gonna chat aquatic turtles. Now, we are lucky in Florida, we have lots of aquatic turtles, okay? And these typically are gonna have a flatter shell and they're gonna have webbed feet, okay? So, this is one of my, this is, this might be my favorite animal at the aquarium. Don't tell all of my turtles, I'm gonna get out and show you. Um, but this is Dalton, he's our alligator snapping turtle. Um, and he lives in O'Baby, so he's a pretty, uh, which is an, our exhibit, um, our baby exhibit. So he's a pretty small little guy. Uh, but um, we also have common snapping turtles here in Florida and this shell, so let me just show you this. So this right here, guys, is from a common snapping turtle. Okay, and you'll see it's much flatter than, um, than Sam's box turtle shell. He does look menacing. I'll show you, uh, I'll go back to that picture in a second because there's something cool I want to show you. But snapping turtles are one of those that kind of gets a bad reputation. And if you guys know me, you know I love the animals that have bad reputations. <laughs> um, and I love to bust the myths about them and snapping turtles is one of them. I used to work for a wildlife shelter and they were some of my favorite ones to get in. Now that doesn't mean you can mess with them because they can be very dangerous, um, but they're, they're also pretty, pretty docile. But if you look here, you'll notice on the back of the shell, it has all these like ridges. So if you guys ever see a turtle that's, um, that has these ridges or has a really, really long tail that's not a sea turtle, it's most likely a, um, a snapping turtle. And you would, would wanna be really, really careful because that's why they're named snapping turtles because they can actually snap their head almost all the way back. Now, Dalton is a alligator snapping turtle. So that means when he is full grown, he will be about 250 pounds. So he will be a big guy. Now, I don't know if you can see in this picture, I took this picture not too long ago. So he's got his mouth open. So you can see he doesn't have any teeth, okay? He's got that flat shell, but, but alligator snapping turtles, even more so than common snapping turtles, have spikes on their shell that are just really, really neat. Um, there are special plates called scoots, and we'll learn about scoots a little, in a little bit. And these scoots are basically keratin-like pieces that grow on top of the bony shell, okay? And that's what they actually shed. And in the snapping turtles, they're much kind of spikier and pointier. Now, if you look right here in the middle of the screen, you see his little tongue, okay? Now, these guys have a really amazing adaptation to catch prey. And what they do is they just, I mean, they're perfectly camouflaged. They lie on the bottom of, of the pond or river or wherever they are, and they wiggle that tongue. And because they're surrounded by mud, the uh, fish is like, oh, look, a yummy worm, and goes over to grab it. Mm, boom, they have themselves a meal. Okay, so Dalton um, is always wiggling that little tongue, which is really funny. So. All right, now um, I don't have pictures in here, but we also have a couple of, um, of yellow-bellied sliders that live here at Moat, which are another type of aquatic turtle we have in Florida. Uh, we have a soft shell turtle. Now, I don't know if you guys notice um, Dalton's little tube-like snout. Okay, so some turtles have adapted this sort of tube-like snout, so they don't really have to come out of the water. Okay, now something like a yellow-bellied slider, you're gonna see them basking in the sun, raising up their body temperature. Somebody like Dalton or um, soft shell turtles with these tube-like snouts, they're not gonna come up to bask as much. They're just gonna stick their little snout out to breathe. Okay, so now it's time to move from aquatic turtles into terrapin world. Now, 
Typically, the aquatic turtles are only found in fresh water. Again, this is a um, sort of a common name um, differentiating, differentiating um, amongst the turtles. So we've got our tortoises, we've got our aquatic turtles, we've got our box turtles, we've got our aquatic turtles, and now we have our terrapins. Now terrapins are considered a brackish water turtle. Okay, so that means they are found all along the coast. So diamondback terrapins can be found from Maine all the way around the coast to Texas. And they're typically found in the coastal habitat. Okay, so they like that mix of fresh and salt, that brackish water. Now, sea salt is the patriarch of our terrapin family, and he is actually on exhibit in the main in the main aquarium. And I hope you all follow our Facebook account because I think it's every Friday they do adventures with sea salt, and they're taking sea salt around to different places and and seeing. It's so cute to watch him watch the other animals. Uh, but sea salt and his mate. Pearl, who you're going to meet here in a second, came to us from the Georgia Sea Turtle Center, okay? Now, we do have this particular diamondback terrapin here in Florida. It's called the Carolina diamondback terrapin in northern Florida. Here where we are at Moat uh, in Sarasota, we have a species called the ornate diamondback terrapin, um, which is highly endangered. Um, really, really beautiful animal. But you can look, he's got that webbed feet, just like um, our aquatic turtles. And he's got kind of that flat shell because these guys are aquatic. Aquatic, okay, they're brackish water, but they're still considered aquatic. Now, terrapin is the main reason I talk about the difference in using common names um, because there are some um, like countries like Great Britain that refer to most turtles as terrapins. Uh, so again, just kind of uh, learning the different names here. But terrapins, um, so many fun adaptations, and they're really, really personable when they're in an aquarium. Now, you cannot have one of these as a pet, um, so they are protected, and we have to have um, special permitting to have them. So when we got Cecil and Pearl, um, we uh, ended we put them in the same tank for a little while. We didn't realize it, but Pearl was actually mature and they actually ended up having three hatchlings over the, the course of the last few years. So I'm gonna introduce you guys to a couple of them now. I don't have Cecil with me because again, he is in the main aquarium, but I would love to introduce you to his mate, Pearl. I'm gonna stop the show, okay, stop the show here, okay. So I'm gonna get out Pearl. Pearl is a full grown female diamondback terrapin, okay? And she came with us from, uh, came to us with Cecil from the Georgia Aquarium. So I'm gonna get him out or get her out. Now again, all right, hey girl. Okay, so this is Pearl, Pearl. Again, full grown female diamondback terrapin. And she is not a sea turtle, okay? But she is a, um, a brackish water turtle. So you can look at her, her feet. She's got those webbed feet. She's got that flat shell. But the thing to me that's most striking about uh, terrapins are there is their polka dotted skin okay so that polka dotted skin is help helps with camouflage and it's also how scientists can photo ID them out in the field which is really amazing now you may notice especially if you've been here before um, that pearl is much bigger than Cecil she's about twice the size anybody want to guess why that is yeah, she's the female. She has to hold the eggs. So a lot of times in animals, not always the case, not the case in sea turtles, but in a lot of animals, the females that have to hold the eggs are a little bit bigger. Now, pop quiz. Anyone know what the word is when a reptile has eggs or when an animal has eggs, the scientific word for it? It's called being gravid, G-R-A-V-I-D, so gravid. So, oh, girl. So she does become gravid a couple times a year, even though she's not with um, she's not with Cecil. And she has her whole, a nice big nesting box. Now these guys in the wild they nest on dunes. So it was kind of funny when we first got her. Well, not funny. It was a little um, concerning at first because we knew she had eggs. Okay, when she when she becomes gravid, she stops eating. 
and we get the vet staff to take a radiograph or an x-ray of her of her body to show if she has eggs or not so what happened she did that and she had eggs and it's when we first got her and we tried everything we had a sandbox for her we could not get her to um to nest so we did a lot more research and found these guys typically nest on dunes so i said maybe she needs an incline. And so we added a nice big hill to her nesting box and sure enough, she nested immediately. So it's really important when these guys are in a, a human care that we simulate their natural environment as much as possible. So now she, um, she lays a nest a couple times a year, even though it's not fertilized. But when we first got her and she was with Cecil, they did have a couple successful hatchlings. So I have one with me, it's not a hatchling anymore, more of a juvenile, uh, but I'll show it to you. Uh, but last thing to show you, I just wanna show you her big back paddle like feet. Okay, these guys nest very similar to sea turtles. They'll dig a big hole, lay eight to 12 eggs a couple times a year. Um, so uh, these are carnivores, okay? So in the wild, they're gonna eat marsh snails, they're gonna eat, um, fish. They might eat um, small crabs like fiddler crabs. Here at Moat, Pearl gets a wide variety of shrimp and squid and fish and all sorts of stuff. All right. Isn't she pretty? She's a little diva. All right. Good job, Pearl. So yeah, when Pearl and Cecil were in the same tank, they mated and, they, and Pearl became gravid. Okay, and about, so she laid her nest, and then about 20 days later or so, okay, so much less time than a sea turtle, um, we had two successful hatch, two successful hatchlings, okay. Um, they were born on December 3rd of 2013. Oh, Pearl is about, she's about 12, Richard, yeah, Pearl's about 12 years old. Sorry, every now and then I'll see a, um, a question pop up. <laughs> um, and so the babies, well, they're not babies anymore. The juveniles are six years old. Now, what's really exciting, so that was Booger and Smiley. You're about to meet Smiley. Two years later, they had another successful hatchling. Even though Pearl and Cecil had not been in the same tank for two years, okay, turtles, are able to actually hold on to sperm and fertilize their own eggs many years later, which is wild, okay? So there's still a lot of um, science being done about it. Um, and we're not exactly sure how many different animals can do it, uh, but we do know that turtles can do it. So it's pretty amazing. So after two years, she laid a, laid a nest. I put her outside for a little enrichment went outside and she was like looking at something in her pond. I was like, what in the world is she looking at? I went over there. It was a baby terrapin. It was a terrapin. Um, we named that guy Homer and Homer now lives at the Florida Aquarium. So if anybody um, has been to the Florida Aquarium lately, well, you know, in the past, hopefully again soon. And you see their, their new terrapin exhibit, say hi to Homer and tell him that you met his parents and you're about to meet his brother. So, without further ado, let me get out Smiley. So this is Smiley. You can see he's a spitting image of his mama. <laughs> Three years old, or six years old. And terrapins, um, you know, in the wild, they probably live to be about 20 or so in captivity or in human care. They're probably going to live a bit long longer. Um, he does look a little bit frowny. Um, but what's really funny about these guys is they're still considered juveniles. Okay. Now, sometimes they mature a little bit slower when they're in human care than out in the wild. But him and his brother, Booger, and I was totally going to have a like naming contest for these guys. Um, when his brother Booger was born, he was tiny and green. And we said, oh, he looks like a booger. And then Smiley, I, you definitely probably cannot see here, but on this particular scoot. So again, scoots are those keratin fingernail like plates covering uh, the shell. 
um, it's got like a little smiley face on it. You definitely can't see it in the, in the um, screen, but so their name stuck, Booger and Smiley. Now they are not in the same tank. They live, they live right next to each other, but they do, um, they do something called foot biting, which is exactly what it sounds like for territory. So as of now, they're separated because if they're together too long, they'll start biting each other's back feet. But I want to show you all a video. All right, say bye, Smiley. Good job. So I want to show you guys a couple pictures of the day they were born. They were the size of a quarter. And then I'm going to show you a little bit of enrichment that I, that I give them. So if you look here, so this is Smiley and Booger the day that they were born. Um, so they were, actually this is probably about a, when they were about a week old. Um, when they're born, they're about the size of a quarter. And you can see on this side of Booger right here, uh, that's called his umbilicus. So that's where he was actually attached to the egg. So when they're first born, this is all turtles, they'll actually live off of the yolk sac. So that's what the yolk is for, for a while. So these guys didn't start eating for um, about a week after they were, they were hatched. Now this next video I wanna show you guys. Oh, sorry, we'll get to you in a second, Squirt. So I give these guys a little bit of enrichment a couple times a week. I call it brother time. And they are obsessed with each other. So they get out. Oh, here, let me start this over. <laughs> Guys! <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> time to eat. So you can see how big they are, how funny they are. But we always want to make sure that they are happy and healthy and stimulated. And so giving them a little bit of brother time enrichment a couple times a week is pretty fun. So, all right, guys. So now we've talked tortoises. We've talked box turtles. We've talked aquatic turtles. We met Dalton. We um, have talked terrapins we met pearl we met smiley okay um so without further ado it's time for sea turtles we're gonna end with sea turtles um so here at moat we've been studying sea turtles out in the gulf for um close to 40 years um and so we've learned a lot about them um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you a couple pictures of the sea turtles that live here. Now, anyone know how many sea turtles there are in the world? How many different species of sea turtles there are? Oh, seven. Good job, Jamie. Yes, seven. So some scientists say eight. Um, they think that this one turtle is called a black turtle, but it's most likely um, a subspecies of the green turtle. So we here at Moat say seven species. Um, out of those seven species, we have five species that nest in Florida. Okay, anyone want to throw out a name of a species of sea turtle that nests in Florida? Give me one. Green, loggerhead, yep, yeah, you got them. Kemp's Ridley, great job. Leatherback, very good. And last, what's the last one that nests in Florida? Hawksbill, very good, Andrew. Uh, the Hawksbill. Yeah, so those are the five that nest in Florida. Now, out of those five, who knows which, one ne which ones nest right here on Sarasota beaches, which is where Moat is, is located. Kemp's Ridley, good job. Okay, Loggerhead. And green. Great job, Mason. Yeah, so those are the three that, that nest here um, on our beaches. Now, Kemp's Ridley is, very, is pretty rare, okay, but it does happen from, from time to time. So let's go ahead and show you this screen because we also have a Kemp's Ridley. So not only do we have Kemp's Ridleys that will nest on our beaches from time to time, we do have a Kemp's Ridley that lives here at Moat. Now Kemp's Ridleys are, um, they've been called the ghosts of the sea because they're, they're really white. Um, they're kind of light in color. 
they're, um, they kind of eat the same things as a loggerhead does. So they're, they have really strong jaw muscles. They're going to be eating crabs and stuff like that. They're much smaller than um, other sea turtles and they're much more endangered. They are the most endangered of all the sea turtles. And the reason for that is because of their unique way that they nest, okay? So these guys nest during the day all at the same time. Now that used to work for them, safety in numbers, but unfortunately, 100, you know, 100 years ago or so, poachers kind of just took them all out, right? And it's, they're slowly building their numbers back, right? Now, some have been relocated from their original nesting beach, which is um, in Mexico, um, to south of Texas. And so now we actually have two different nesting spots for them. So that's why sometimes we get them um, on our beaches here in the Gulf. Now, Squirt came to us. He was actually found, or she was actually found floating and had an old boat strike. She's been with us a couple years. We really tried, so we have a well dolphin and sea turtle hospital that patients will come into, okay? Our number one goal is to get them back out into the wild, okay? Every now and then that can't happen. So for whatever reason, they're deemed non-releasable and they have to become permanent residents of, of a um, AZA, Association of Zoo and Aquarium Institution, like us here at Moat. So that's why we have Squirt and all these animals I'm about to introduce you to. So Squirt 2 lives in our Marine Mammal Center and um, along with the other sea turtle residents, they do a lot of research with them, okay? So researching their cognitive abilities, their senses, you know, how well do they hear, how well do they see. You know, the more we can learn about sea turtles in human care, the more we can help them out in the wild. Everything we do here at Moat is to help these animals out in the wild, right? Um, and to, and, but being able to see these guys up close is, is pretty exciting. So that is Squirt, our Kemp's Ridley. We also have Hang Tough, who is our blind green sea turtle. Now green sea turtles um, are the second largest of all the sea turtles. Who knows the first? Leatherbacks, so leatherbacks are the largest of all the reptiles, believe it or not, um, even bigger than saltwater crocs. They're huge. Um, Greens are second biggest. So greens can get up to like 400 feet or 400 feet. Well, that would be big, 400 pounds. Um, so this is Hang Tough. Hang Tough is our blind green sea turtle that lives at the Mammal Center as well. Unfortunately, um, Hang Tough was hit by a boat and also had a hook in her eye. We found out that Hang Tough is a female. Now the way that you tell a female sea turtle versus a male doesn't have to do with the eyes like the box turtle. It has to do with the tail, okay? So the males have a really long tail, um, and the females, you can hardly see the tail. Um, but you can't, uh, you can't tell the gender or, until they're full grown, okay? So they have to be mature before you can do that, okay? So Hang Tough, as Hang Tough grew and that tail stayed short, we said, oh, Hang Tough is, is a girl. <laughs> um, so Hang Tough. But um, green sea turtles, when they're first born, they're omnivorous, but as they get older, they become um, um, herbivorous. So they're going to be eating algae, um, seagrass, um, that kind of stuff. Now, green sea turtles that come into our hospital, they develop a, um, they can get a virus called fibropapillomavirus. Um, it's like these tumors all over. We typically only see it in green sea turtles. We're not sure exact, not sure exactly what causes it, but we think it could possibly be due from things like runoff, you know, that's what we learned about in our watershed class last week, uh, pollutants and things like that getting into the water, okay? Uh, runoff and stuff is bad news for all of our animals, right? Our, our box turtle, um, if they get pesticides or fertilizers in their eyes, same with our gopher tortoises, you know, all that stuff it can be really bad on our turtles, right? So we got to take care of our watershed, take care of our turtles. Now I want to show you all the green sea turtle shell. So if you look at this, so this is from what we call a sub-adult. Um, okay, so this turtle would not be old enough for us to tell the difference in male or female. But if you look, you're going to notice the green has one, two, three, four lateral scoots. Okay, these are lateral scoots. Okay, now that's how you can tell the difference between a green sea turtle shell and a 
loggerhead sea turtle shell. So in just a second, I'm going to show you the loggerhead. So again, four lateral scoots make the green sea turtle shell. And anyone know why they're called green sea turtles? I mean, they kind of look a little green, but they're kind of like an olivey green. They, yeah, exactly. They eat green food. They, because of the algae and the seagrass that they eat, they eat so much chlorophyll from the plants that their fat is kind of a greenish color. All right, cool. Moving right along. Last one to show you before we do our quick little research is our loggerheads. Now loggerheads here in Sarasota County, we have the highest density of loggerhead sea turtle nests in the world, I believe. Um, so loggerheads are a pretty big deal here. So these guys apparently are named from many years ago, sailors out to sea would see a turtle or see something ahead and they would think it was a log and they'd say, log ahead. It turned out it was a turtle with a big old head, okay? So that's where they got their name, loggerhead sea turtles. So we have Shelly and Montego. Now, sea turtles typically do not live together. They are not social. Once they hatch, they are gone, okay? Now, these girls are sisters, and they've been with us for many years, so they share a tank. Um, but typically, you're not going to find that, okay? Now, loggerhead sea turtles love to eat crabs, and they have and snails, so conch shells. I meant to grab a conch shell to show you guys, but think about a big like conch shell and how hard it is. So these loggerheads have huge jaw muscles that they can actually crunch up those shells, which is kind of wild. Okay, what goes in the hole? Who knows what goes in the hole? The brain. So these guys, just because they have a small brain doesn't mean they're not smart. It just means that when they hatch from their eggs, they kind of have everything needed to survive. Okay, so they're going on instinct, right? That's why pollution, plastic bags, these things that look like they're food, especially for the leatherback and the eating jellyfish, you know, they're, they're going on instinct. So they see something in the water, they automatically think it's a jellyfish. They have not learned that it's, that it's not um, their food, okay? So because of that small brain, it's just another reason why it's so important that we help take care of them and their turtles. All right, guys, great job listening to me talk about, I'm sorry, I could talk about turtles for so long. And of course, I'm running out of time because anyone that's been to my class knows that's kind of what I do. <laughs> uh, but I just love talking about turtles. So uh, last thing I want to just share with you is how Moat is studying turtles. Okay, I'm going to kind of go through the activity with you. And since I'm kind of running out of time, you guys can do it with me now or do it later for sure. I'll just kind of show you how to do it. So I'm gonna go back to this screen and just show you a little bit about um, our sea turtle conservation and research program. How many of you guys have ever done turtle patrol with your family? Yeah, we have a lot of amazing volunteers. Um, a lot of your parents are amazing volunteers that come out and walk the beaches. So they walk the beaches and sea turtle season just started. So we're in it right now. And the sea turtles are thriving. Last year we had a record number of nests, okay? And so what our turtle patrol and our researchers do is they walk the beach every day from May to October, and they're looking for sea turtle nests. When they find those nests, they mark them, and then they monitor them. Um, at night, they'll go out. If a mother sea turtle is coming up, they may tag that sea turtle. Again, the more we know, the more that we can protect them. Whoops. Oh yes, I just wanted to show you. If you go here, sorry guys. Um, so if you head to moat.org and go under research, okay, go down to the sea turtle conservation and research program, that's going to tell you all about our, um, our program. Some really amazing tips to keep sea turtles um, happy and healthy, okay, or keep our beaches turtle friendly. So on the water, what to do if you find a sea turtle. And then over here, guys, you can actually go to sea turtle tracks and see 
where our turtles have gone, any of the ones that we have tagged. You can check them out, read their story. So it's, it's kind of exciting to be able to do that. Oh, sorry guys. Now I'm trying to rush and I'm going too quick. Okay, so what we're gonna do together in these last 10 minutes of our program, and if you have to go, I won't be offended. Um, and please check out those turtle do's and don'ts, okay? Because keeping our beaches um, clean and safe is the best thing we can do for our turtles. Make sure you fill in those holes, boys and girls, okay? That's a big thing to keep our turtle hatchlings safe and make sure you keep that beach nice and clean, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make, let's see if I can, our own sea turtle hatch our own sea turtle nest and just kind of really quickly simulate our research and again guys go to our Flipgrid afterwards I'm actually going to put this um, activity up there um, so as a follow-up so if we don't have time to get to it today no big deal you guys can check it out later but on the pre-lesson activity guide I had a couple of pictures of tracks okay so I got this track here I've got this guy here. Okay, so this is track A, and this is track B, if you've got your, your lessons, okay? Now, first thing our, our, um, our turtle patrol has to do is they have to actually identify the tracks, okay? So, the main ones we're identifying here on our beaches are green sea turtles, and our loggerhead sea turtles. Now, how you might ask, do we find them? Well, we look for the tracks, of course, okay? How do we know which one's green and which one is loggerhead? Any guesses? I'm gonna go back to share screen in just a second. So you can tell based on their pattern. So if we go back to my share screen here, so A, this particular turtle, when they move, they alternate their flippers. Okay, so everybody put your flippers up for me and alternate. Okay. The one on the left, on the right, when they come up on the beach, they don't alternate. Okay, they pull them to, at the same time. So sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, but for the most part, this is how we can tell the species. Now, the one on the left, any guesses? is the loggerhead, you got it. The loggerhead on the left and the green on the right. Now the greens, the female typically has a little bit longer of a tail and for whatever reason, the way they pull themselves up, usually in the middle, you're gonna find that tail drag, okay? So they're walking down the beach, they're looking for these turtle tracks. When they find them, what they're gonna do is they're gonna stake it off, okay? And I have this stake here. Okay, now I'm not gonna, I don't really have time to go through everything on the stake now, um, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm happy to post that on the Flipgrid if you're interested on what everything means on that stake, okay? So they stake them off and then every day they're gonna check them. Now, in 50 to 70 days, um, upwards of 200 turtles are gonna hatch and they're gonna head to the water okay they're looking for the brightest light which should be the moon so that's why we say everyone should turn their lights off during turtle season and so they'll go back and check now when these turtles are about to hatch what happens is they'll all start wiggling in their nest the sand will settle and it will create something called a drop okay it almost looks just like it almost looks like someone stepped in the middle of the nest um, but it's not it's just all those little turtles wiggling and typically they will hatch the next day now we don't put the dates on here anymore of when the turtles are gonna hatch. Unfortunately, a lot of people were, were sitting around the nest and kind of waiting to watch. Now, even though it's an amazing experience to be able to see that, um, too many, again, we don't wanna affect our wildlife, okay? So we're not putting the dates on there anymore. Um, but then we're gonna check and make sure that it's hatched and everything is good. If those 70 day, oh, there's a little loggerhead heading out to sea. Now, if that 70 days goes by and the, the um, 
the nest has not hatched, then what our trained, uh, permitted researchers will do is something called an excavation, okay? And that's what they're doing here is excavating the nest, all right? And to figure out, are there any more viable um, hatchlings in there or what needs to be done, okay? So, what I was gonna do with you guys until I talked way too much about, <laughs> about turtles is we were gonna make our own nest together. I'm so sorry, I'm gonna, I gotta get better with these virtual times, right? Um, and I'm just gonna show you real quick the supplies to use and then you all can make your own and then check out the Flipgrid within the next 30 minutes or so. I will add that follow-up activity. So if you wanna actually do a little bit of science and calculate percentage of turtles hatched and that kind of thing. So you just need a clear container something in it that represents eggs, okay? So for this one, I have ping pong balls. Over here, I have my little container. I wanted to do it with color. Now the follow-up activity, follow activity requires the colored pom-poms, um, but again, you can make it your own. So make your little nest, something to simulate sand. Okay, you're gonna set it down over your tracks. Tape your stakes to the side. I'm not gonna do it again because I'm running out of time. Oh, thanks for your patience, you guys. Tie it off. Add a little steak. What do I do with it? Add some recycled sea turtle hatchlings. <laughs> And there you go, you've got a nest. Again, this is a very quick and dirty um, uh, demonstration of how to make that nest, but please, if you wanna make a nest, go um, and check out the Flipgrid. Try your hand at identifying the tracks, okay? And then last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you can join us. For our upcoming program. So next week I'm going to be back here at Moat because um, also I have so many fun things to show you. It's hard for me to do that at, how, at my house. So I'm going to show you all kinds of cool stuff about marine mammals. And then we've got four new May programs coming up. Um, so stay tuned for those. Registration will open um, at least two weeks in advance for the, for the thing. And, sa and same with the pre-lesson activity guide. So friends, I feel like I just have way too much turtle information in my brain that I went a little nutty today. So I hope you all had fun learning about turtles. Please tell us your favorite turtle that you met today. Um, if you do end up making a nest, okay, and simulating some of that turtle research, please take a picture of it and tag us um, at home with Moat or put it on our Flipgrid. We would love to see it. So thank you guys for joining me today. Happy Earth Day. Guys, let's not make the weight of the world have to be on just the turtles. Let's all help out. Everyone get outside today. Uh, do a cleanup if you can. Um, yeah, let's, let's show our Earth a little love. So thanks everybody and happy Earth Day and I'll see you next week.